So this is the OM1 Mark II camera from OM System. I am Guido van der Waarde, an OM System ambassador, and after using this camera for six months, I ran across a couple of issues that really, really annoyed me. And let's state one thing, this is a fabulous camera, and uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying every second that I'm using this camera. But there are a couple of functions, a couple of settings that I recommend you to change. Um, because uh, it took me some time uh, before I figured out how to solve the, the couple of issues that I had uh, with this camera. But luckily, all the issues that I had were being able or, or I could solve by changing some settings. And uh, some of them took quite some time for me because before I realized it. But I want to share these tips uh, today and hopefully uh, they will help you or solve your issues or you can do something with it. So. Let's dive into this video and I will show you the uh, settings that I recommend you to change on this camera. So let's quickly go into the, the first uh, setting that uh, really annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> let's be honest. And I actually thought this was a Lightroom thing. So let me tell you first what my problem was. As a landscape photographer, I do a lot of high resolution shooting. You know, you can use the red button on top here to access the high res mode of your camera. Uh, if you hold the red button and turn the back wheel here, you can choose between a handheld shot and a tripod shot. Well, the difference is in the handheld shot, it keeps the image stabilization on and you get a 50 megapixel uh, file. Uh, the tripod version uh, should give me an 80 megapixel file. And here comes the tweaky part. The OM1 Mark II, uh, as promised by OM System, uh, delivers 14-bit high-res files on the tripod mode. So I was very keen on looking into that 14-bit uh, uh, shots if they were any better than the 12-bit shots. But, and now it comes, let me show you what happens when I start importing files um, into um, my Lightroom catalog. So right here, um, let's go to Lightroom. If I say import, uh, I recently shot one, uh, one or two. So let me show you what happens. Do you see these images right here? These are all tripod uh, shots that I took in the high resolution mode. And Lightroom just says it can't handle those shots. So in uh, after the first, uh, time I uh, discovered this about six months ago, I thought, okay, Lightroom has to know these files. It, it's not updated yet. So I'm going to wait for a Lightroom update. Eventually, the Lightroom update came, but I still couldn't handle them. So I sent a message to Lightroom and they, uh, of course, never replied to me. So thank you, Adobe, for, uh, for your response. But I just figured maybe I should wait another update. Uh, this problem only occurs in the uh, tripod mode uh, of the high resolution shot, so not in the handheld mode. So handheld was no problem. So what I've been doing, I've been shooting uh, handheld shots over the past uh, six months instead of using the tripod. But of course, uh, this is a way better uh, way on the tripod to do this. Um, but what I recently discovered and that's the funny part, because I just thought that Lightroom couldn't handle the 14-bit high-resolution files, because that's why it's not showing it, because the handheld shots are 12-bit, and they are shown in Lightroom. But it's actually nothing like that. So what the problem is, or the problem is actually not a problem, the OM1 Mark II, by default, um, and I'll, I'll show you on the camera later, but it's by default sets its high res files to 12 bits. And the 12 bit tripod versions that this camera can take are not recognized anymore by Lightroom. So uh, if you change this setting, and I didn't know that you could change it because it wasn't there on earlier cameras, uh, I never looked in this menu. But recently I came across it and I noticed, hey, I'm still shooting at 12-bit. So I changed it to 14-bit and ta-da, the images are 
able to open in Lightroom. So we have a new feature with better image quality, but the standard uh, is 12 bit. So change this to 14 bit and I'll show you uh, which menu it is in a second. Um, if you did take a lot of 12 bit images that you can't import in Lightroom, uh, which is really frustrating and I actually don't think Lightroom is ever going to uh, solve this issue. Um, what you can do if you go to OM Workspace, uh, go to the files that you have selected and you can see on the top corners here, uh, there is the icon of the high resolution files. And if you just select these files, uh, you can export them and for example uh, as a TIFF. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, TIFF has a lot of information that you can still uh, use for editing, but it's not as good as a RAW or ORF file. Um, one other difference, the TIFF files, and you can see it in a recent uh, upload that I did here in Lightroom. Well, for example, this file here, this is a TIFF file from a recent tip uh, to Denmark. So this is what I uh, exported from OM Workspace and then uploaded the TIFF file into uh, Lightroom. Of course, you can edit in OM Workspace also, but I'm just so stuck in my Lightroom workflow that uh, I don't like using other software. So I uploaded the TIFF. You can see it's a high res shot. It's 10,000 by uh, almost 7,000 pixels. But with these TIFF files, you cannot use noise reduction in Lightroom. You can do the manual version, but not the uh, automatic AI version of the uh, noise reduction. So that was a real letdown of the 12-bit uh, the, the files coming out of the Mark II. But with the 14-bit files, it's no problem. You can just use the high-res and the image quality is just amazing. And I'm going to make a different video where I'm going to compare uh, the 14, 12 bits, high res handheld, tripod versions. Uh, so that's coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm still busy with, uh, with figuring that out. But let me show you now how you can change this setting in the camera. So if you go to the menu button on the top here, just above the screen, and you go to the second tab, so you use the front dial, uh, and then it says here high resolution images, so the top one. You enter it. And you can see that there is now a second option here that wasn't there on earlier models. And you can choose between 12 bit and 14 bits. So the standard is 12 bits, which you can't open in Lightroom. And the 14 bit, which has much better image quality, is on the right. And you can also choose here, and this is also strange, that the standard is a 50 megapixel file. But you can, of course, select an 80 megapixel file up here. So it gives you an 80 megapixel, 14-bit uh, yeah, raw file and with absolutely amazing dynamic range. And this is also a nice setting that I want to show you. You can say here, uh, it says wachttijd in Dutch, but it's, it should say uh, a waiting time. And you can change that uh, time, whatever you want, from uh, just a quarter of a second. So what this does... It's the time that the camera waits uh, until it starts taking the images. So it's a bit of a delayed shutter release, uh, which you can also do. Let me show you on the back here. Uh, of course, over here. But in this menu, with a high res file, you can only choose a two second timer delay here. So, and of course, uh, that is quite difficult sometimes because after two seconds, there is still some camera shakes in. Um, in these images. So I recommend you to, uh, if you're taking a high res shot, just put that onto four seconds, five seconds, whatever you want, but just give it a couple of seconds extra uh, to stabilize before it starts taking these high res images. So the second thing that's been annoying me uh, really much is when you're taking uh, long exposures. And this is not only for the OM1 Mark II, but it's also for the OM1. And I see it with a lot of people, and especially when you're doing night photography. So uh, this uh, last night I was out for doing some night photography in the city here again. And uh, the video is coming up in a couple of weeks if you're interested in the results of that. Um, but when you are taking a long exposure, for example, 60 seconds in the dark, after the 60 seconds, the camera starts applying some sort of noise reduction uh, in body. And that takes the exact same time 
as your uh, shutter speed was programmed to. So if you're doing a 60 second long exposure, it's going to take 60 seconds after that before that noise reduction is finished in the camera. So it says uh, applying noise reduction and the timer is rolling back from uh, that time. And it's just really annoying, especially if you want to shoot another shot straight after it. You're just standing there for a minute uh, eating from your nose or whatever you want to do, but uh, not doing photography. And uh, I did some comparisons and I actually think that the difference between not applying that automatic noise reduction and doing it isn't that big, especially when you're losing Lightroom. Uh, just apply the, the automatic noise reduction in Lightroom and you won't have a problem at all. So let me show you how to turn it off because it took me some time to figure it out. So the first thing we do again is go to the menu here on the top left of the screen, just outside of this uh, footage. Uh, and then you will have to go to the first camera here on the top left, the first menu, and then it's the third tab here, the third one. And on the bottom, it says noise. You have a noise filter, which I always have on standard, but it's the last one here. It says here, uh, Ruis onderdrukking with noise reduction. Just turn this one off. When you turn that off, you immediately will uh, get rid of that uh, timer after you took a long exposure in the dark. It's just really, really annoying. So one next thing that I want to show you, uh, let me show you the back of the camera here, which makes it much easier. So but uh, another problem was what that I was facing. Um, on the OM1, I could choose here, if you go to the autofocus menu and your quick menu on the back, you can choose now between single autofocus, continue on your autofocus, manual focus, uh, continuous autofocus tracking, and so on. But there used to be an option, single autofocus plus manual focus. So, um, for example, if you want to, if you've already uh, out of focus on something, you can fine tune it a little bit with your own hand. Or uh, for example, you're focusing on the wrong bird, you can just adjust it a little bit in that uh, function. But somehow, as you can see on the OM1 Mark II, this function isn't here. But in fact, it is here, but it is hidden. So. If you go back to the menu uh, button up here again, then you have to go to the autofocus menu. So that's the third one on the top. And then you have to go to the first tab of that menu. And then the second one says AF plus MF. And it's standard is off. So if you turn it on, let's go back to this menu here. You can see that now I have manual focus on this and that's just really really helpful especially for fine-tuning those shots um, which I think is a really nice uh, feature so uh, definitely worth uh, yeah to uh, to turn it on if if it was my camera of course everyone has to decide for themselves uh, if they find these tips useful or not so and then there are a couple of things that uh, um, in workshops and things over the past couple of months that I've come across uh, many times on uh, lectures, people asking me for it. Uh, during the photo fair here in the Netherlands, I got a lot of questions of people that uh, said that their images weren't in focus or the image stabilization doesn't seem to work. And these are some uh, problems that I came across uh, that happened many, many times. So um, let me show you this first thing first about the image stabilization. If you go to the quick menu, just push the OK button, uh, you get into this quick menu and on the right bottom here it says image stabilization off. Well, normally of course it's on, but on a tripod I always uh, turn it off. But I recommend you to always use the auto uh, image stabilization. What I see a lot of people do is turn it to uh, SI2 or even SI3 and what the problem here is the SI2 only stabilizes uh, let's have a look vertical movement so it's moving in this direction and SI3 only does it in horizontal movement for example if you want to uh, have a uh, cycler that and you, you want it uh, 
you want to do the pulling technique, you know, uh, move the camera along with the cycler and then push the shutter so the cycler is in focus and the background isn't. You don't want that horizontal function to be stabilized because uh, you want that movement in the image. So the only thing you want to stabilize in that particular uh, thing is the vertical movement of your camera. So then you put it in SI, let's have a look, uh, SI2, that's for vertical stabilization only and SI3 is for horizontal movement so if you want to uh, photograph something that is coming down I have no idea what for example a plane or something one with a parachute uh, uh, something like that uh, someone on a, a slide or something <laughs> I don't have many examples of uh, where I want to use that but then you can use uh, the SI3 function um, the SI1 function, it stabilizes the sensor in all directions all the time. But with some lenses, it's better that the camera chooses the stabilization of the lens, uh, which in that case is better or it works together. So what you're telling the camera here is only use the stabilization of the sensor, which you uh, probably don't want. You just want the camera to choose the best stabilization. So I always recommend people keep it on auto uh, image stabilization and the second thing and you probably won't uh, believe that that this is a thing but it really really is a thing and let me get the camera here for a second and show you so what I see a lot of people they're they're coming to me and they say yeah my focus point is uh, changing for example I've put it on the right top corner and when I take the photograph, it's not in focus and my focus point is not on the right top corner anymore. What actually happens, and I've seen this many times, people put the camera towards their face and then hit the screen with their nose. And if you hit it like that, the focus point changes to where your nose hits the screen. So, uh, you, of course, you can just watch out for it, uh, but there's also an option to block the screen. So let me show you here on the back of the camera how you can turn that off. So you can see now I can adjust my focus point here on the back of the camera. But if I push this button here on the left bottom and I'm changing it to this one with the, the round with the line through it, I can't push my screen anymore, but I do, I am able to access the menu functions if you want to go into a menu or something. Um, the other options here is, this is the uh, focusing, but you can also choose for it to make a picture when you put uh, your finger on it. So a lot of options here, but Personally, I always use this one because I don't like to focus on the back of the screen. So, and then there's one last thing that I want to share with you, and that was something that I've shared in this video. I've put it up here, and uh, I actually told something that wasn't exactly the truth, um, and which I want to state now that uh, what I actually figured out uh, only worked in JPEG mode. So let me show you the back of the camera here because I was really enthusiastic by this function if you go to this menu, you get this uh, diagram here. And you can change the highlights and the shadows separately. So you get this, this diagram and it seemed to work really, really well. But what I didn't think of was that in the first two months that I got the camera, uh, Lightroom wasn't able to open the RAW files, so I couldn't do anything with those RAW, for, RAW files. So I only looked at the JPEG versions that came out of the camera. And this setting is only applied to the JPEG versions, so not to the RAW files. So uh, you can alter a JPEG in camera, but it has no effect on the final result of the RAW file. Hopefully someday they will be able to do this because it's just a very, very handy tool to apply in the field. And I was really enthusiastic by it, but apparently I just didn't figure out that I was only looking at the JPEG files at the time then. So uh, maybe in an update somewhere in the future, they will uh, 
adjust these things and uh, if we will be able to use this option in the raw files it would really really be a game changer if if i had to decide for it but uh, yeah i'm just really looking forward to that so what i said in this video uh, the one that i just put up uh, it is working but not on the raw files that's just something to keep in mind so thanks for watching i hope you liked these uh, couple of settings that i wanted to share with you and uh, that you can use them in the field and that you're not facing these annoying problems that i am and uh, yeah i just hope you find it useful so thanks for watching uh, i wish you the best of luck in the field with these new settings and uh, if you ever have any questions about ohm system cameras feel free to contact me uh, send me a message to my website or underneath this video or whatever and i will try to help you as good as i can or get you in touch with anyone that that is possible to uh, to help you uh, i don't know many people there but uh, of course as an ambassador uh, I will always do the best for everyone using these cameras to, uh, to help them out, to figure out their, uh, their issues. So hope to see you on the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please push the thumbs up button. You will massively help this channel. And uh, there is also a subscribe button underneath here. If you didn't subscribe, uh, I do a lot of on-location photography, mostly landscapes, but also cityscapes, animals, birds. Uh, it all comes by uh, from time to time. And it's a weekly new channel. So every Thursday and Sunday, I got new videos full of tips and tricks uh, on location material. So if you're interested in that, then please consider subscribing to the video. And uh, I hope to see you next time. So bye bye.